Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Have you heard of the rollover relay? Do you know what it is and how it works? Let me explain it in a high level in this video for you. For most customer, it is common and sufficient to hold a property under your joint personal name. And there is no need to be overly complicated the ownership structure. However, over the time, your goal and circumstances may have a significant change, such as transitioning your permanent job role into a self-employed role, which can largely expose your financial risk. Or you may get into a relationship after acquiring the property. Then your property can be in a risk if your relationship isn't going well. Alternatively, your personal tax rate may be high, while your spouse or your adult student tax rate are lower. Keeping the investment property in your personal names can lead into a higher tax burden. These situations may prompt to you to consider transferring your ownership of existing assets from one entity to another, such as moving the properties from personal ownership to a local company or a trust to a better protection for your asset and legally reduce the taxes as well. However, with the introduction of the Brightline test back in 2018, these entity transfer have become more complex as you may trigger the capital gain tax. If you purchase an investment property on or after the 27th of March 2021, the Brightline rule period is 10 years of time for the existing property or five years under the new build property. If the purchase was made on or after the 29th of March 2018, but before the 27th of March 2021, the Brightline rule period is five years or two years if that is new build. Once the ownership is transferred, it's easy to trigger the Brightline rule, which means that you even if you sell your property after the two years time, you may still be liable for capital gain tax if the Brightline rule is met. Additionally, in 2021, the New Zealand government introduced a policy that stopped the interest payment on investment property into a tax reduction. Transferring the ownership could further affect you because a significant amount of interest that you pay annually would no longer be deductible, leading a higher tax burden. However, a new policy known as a rollover relief has emerged, which is a tax relief policy allowing certain property transferring from one entity to another without any trickling the bright line tax rule or impacting the non deductible interest policy. These special circumstances include from personal ownership to a trust, from a trust to beneficiaries, from personal ownership to an LTC or vice versa, from one trust to another trust, and lastly is from personal ownership of an LTC to a trust. Since the policy is relatively new, not many people are familiar with it but it can be very useful in protecting your asset and saving a significant amount of taxes. Let's look at the recent cases. There were clients who owned multiple investment properties, most of which were in an LTC, but their initial property purchase was joining in their personal name. The client had a tax rate of 39% and 30% respectively. Since the property was held in their personal names, the profit had to be split in 50-50 for the tax purposes as they had relatively little loan balance on this early property purchases and could only claim 50% of the interest de deduction. This was not a tax sufficient. After successfully transferring the property to LTC, they are not only reducing the tax burden, but also increased the loan related to the investment property during the ownership restructure, allowing for most of the interest to be used to offset the taxes. Although there's no clear policy on the interest deductions at the moment, with both major political parties supporting its removal, with one proposing a phase-out removal over two years' time, and the other proposing an immediate removal. Another case involves client planning to replace their primary residence, which they had owned for a long time and had almost paid off. If they were to directly obtain a loan to buy a new primary residence, none of the interest would be taxed deductible. Since the old primary residence with little remaining loan would not yield any interest deductions resulting in high taxes. Following our advice, the clients consult with accountants and lawyers 
transferring the old power residence to a trust. And as the, in previous cases, increasing the loan associated with the property to offset taxes. I hope that through today's content, you can gain a better understanding of the rollover relief policy and are encouraged to use it to manage your property and taxes more effectively. Some of you may also think that we also provide accounting services since you have seen our tax related content in our videos. Actually, we are not the accounting firm. We only offer mortgages services. However, we incorporate taxes and legal into our discussion because these are the factors closely related into real estate investment. Our goal is providing you a comprehensive solution to our clients through our analyzing, identifying, and solving problems from multiple angles, but not just obtaining a loan for you. However, tax or legal advice should still need to seek from professional tax accountants and lawyers. While we can assist you in implementing their recommendations. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video.